You all do your best now. Yeah! yeah. Like always, three laps to the finish. Everybody ready? Yeah! yeah. On your mark, almost time to go. Ready? Go! All right, everybody, Mr. Boom Chakalaka back again with my first time playing through of Shenmue for the PlayStation 4. And we are back at it. I've taken about a week and a half off of doing my first time playthrough of Shenmue to uh, record my first time playthrough of Medieval, the Medieval remake that just came out. Another game that I never got around to back in the day. And uh, it's going to be quite the change up here coming back to Shenmue. Going from uh, a game like Shenmue to playing all of Medieval and then coming right back to Shenmue. Which Medieval, as you probably already are aware, is... It's, uh... I don't know. Going into it, I assumed it was a 3D platformer in the same vein as something like Banjo-Kazooie or Super Mario 64, but, uh... It was more... It was much more linear than either of those titles. It wasn't the open world collectathon that those games are. It was much more linear, much more tight and focused, and uh, it was great. I loved it. Highly recommend it. But it's more of an action platformer than it is your typical 3D platformer. We're back, back to Shenmue now. Oh, I'm actually in, almost in first. I honestly haven't even been paying attention here. And it's lap two. We, we have a chance for first place here. Woo! As soon as I start focusing is when I'm going to screw things up. That'd be awesome. But I never actually thought I'd get first here. Just because, uh... I'm not all that great. Turns out I'm not all that great at racing forklifts, so... And shit like that happens. Alright, dude. Give me hell to pay when I catch up to ya. Oh man, lap, lap 2 time is really good. 56.19. Like I said, though, once I start to fall, this is when I'm gonna... Biff it. So yeah, we are now on day three here, and from reading up on the game, looks like we have five days of racing forklift and uh, moving freight before Finish. before uh, another major story beat takes place. So oh man, so close! You almost had it. Here's your prize. Thanks. It's time for work. Let's get cracking. I'm ready. Take this cargo to warehouse number 18. Here's the route map. Today's quote is written on the map. No problem. Okay, get to it then. Warehouse number 18 again. It's always number 18. Yeah, and I've been... No, I don't think it's gonna be this way. I've been going back and forth in my head whether or not to uh, trim some of these videos in, in terms of the... Uh, because every... It feels like every forklift race is the same every day. And... Uh, in terms of actually doing this forklift job, <laughs> watch where you're going. In terms of doing the forklift job, it feels like it's going to be the same every day. So, um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually keep all of the video just so, just so everyone gets an idea of what the full game is actually like. Um, 
I don't know. That's what I, I prefer, at least for this game. Because I think it was intentionally made like this. Um, you know, they, they clearly knew what they were doing. And I've read a little bit up on Shenmue 2, which I plan on playing after this. And apparently they actually give you the option to to uh, fast forward, like if you have to wait until a certain time to trigger a story event, you can actually uh, skip to that part. Now you can't, uh, from what I've heard, you can't actually just skip skip forward at any time. It, you, it has to be specifically for a story event. So, but still, that's. That's a major difference right there, and a major uh, convenience over what they did here, where you can't skip time at all. But I think that's kind of uh, for people who view this game as a classic. The people who do do love it, because it's certainly a divisive game. They uh, they actually prefer like the uh, kind of what some what some people would call boring sections of the game. They like that you can't skip one. It's kind of like in uh, large open world games there are people who who dislike it when developers put in the option to just pick any point on the map and fast travel there. And I, I understand that. It's certainly, if they have a fast travel system, I'm going to use it, but I understand the argument against not having it. And really, I mean, kind of bitching to complain about something that you don't have to use, you know, but I do, I do, at the same time I understand it, because a game like Morrowind, which, uh, The Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind, which I would say is my favorite game of all time, you couldn't fast travel like you can in Skyrim. They had, uh, Silt Striders which was the closest you could get to fast traveling around the map. It's pretty much like using a, uh, a uh, train almost. The silt Some of the major cities had silt striders and you could pay to use them to get to other major cities. But that was it. Maybe there was also a spell that you could use, but I, that game is just so incredibly deep. It still is, to this day, probably the deepest game I've ever played. Just the amount of different options you could have. And I remember one character. I would uh, build up my archery skill to 100 and my jumping skill to 100 acrobatic skill, which they actually had, which I they took out in future games Oblivion and Skyrim, and I... I Eight, that they took it out because it was awesome to to build that skill up all the way to 100 you can jump like the 10 15 feet in the air jump up into a tree jump on top of a house somewhere where where enemies with melee weapons couldn't get you and then you just snipe them out with your bow it was awesome so yeah it's uh we gotta work until noon and now we get our break we'll see if we can can meet our quota today back and forth back and forth you know these sections that where you can't skip them and it's uh you know somewhat tedious I think they play a large part in getting you acquainted with the world and uh, and that's, uh, I mean it's just something that most games don't have and so most people feel inclined to kind of rush through them and uh, you know you don't, you don't become, become as well acquainted with their worlds and 
Shenmue has it, and that's why uh, a lot of people love it, because they were forced to, uh, forced to spend time in, time in it and uh, get used to it. And it's just really a unique aspect of the game. Trying to make some money here, dude. Move it or lose it. I am looking forward to playing Shimmer 2. I don't know if I'll play it right after I get done with Shimmer 1, but uh, I will get around to it soon. Apparently it's a little bit longer than the first one here, which knowing that you can skip forward at certain points makes me think that there's, there's quite a bit more to do in Shenmue 2. I mean if it's longer than this one and you can skip forward in time, it's a pretty good indication that uh, that uh, there's more to do, or at least the story, the main story is longer. Yeah, it looks like this will be the last crate we get, get here before uh, it's time for break. Let's hear that air horn blow. There it is. Lunch time, eh? That's okay. Don't be shy. Stand there. Here we go. Both of you get in closer. Smile. That's it. Here goes. Which do you want? Yo? Oh man, choices. Yeah. Let's go, uh, let's go with the one on the right. Oh, this one. Okay, this one's yours, and this one's Nozomi's. They're keepsakes. What's with her? I... I'm going to Canada. What? I took a while to decide, but... Hey, if it's what you've decided, it's what you've decided. Ryo, don't do anything stupid. Of course I won't. I'll always treasure this. Ryo, take care of yours too. I will. I'll come back when I'm on vacation. Sure. Bye then, Ryo. Nozomi. Going to Canada, eh? Well, that's too bad. Seemed like a lovely young lady. So let's finish off the rest of our break here. And uh, we will start back up when our shift starts back up. <laughs> 